to another episode of Post Shave, where we look at the weekly roundup of what's happening on Shave the Man across the interwebs. I'm your host, Con Kazanzidis. Let's get on with the questions. When lathering my Samoog 1305, lather's pushed to the outside edges of the brush and it's thinner in the middle. Does this go away as the brush is broken in? The break-in period for a bore brush typically is about 10 to 15 shaves. Now, the 1305 typically has uh, quite a bit of loft and you're going to see some splaying occurring. When the brush is relatively new and the tips have not split, then you're likely to get this effect that you're talking about. Continued use will definitely remedy this. Con, I was so surprised watching one of your very early Shave the Man videos and watching how much time and effort you put into working up a thick lather. Miles more than I ever knew or realized. Maybe it's worth discussing in more detail to us newbie wet shavers. Surprised is one thing, shocked is another. Firstly, I have to apologize for you having to sit through some earlier videos of mine. Um, you may require therapy. Okay, so let's get to the nitty gritty. Not all soaps have identical loading times. Not all brushes load the same way. Um, so again, there are so many variables that you need to consider. This is a qualitative process. You can't say, I only swirl it for 30, you know, I give it 30 swirls and it's fine, or I, I swirl for 30 seconds. Some soaps uh, only require a very short load time. Others, require a bit more. Different soaps and different brushes are the most important variables in loading, and these vary enormously. For example, a hard bore bristle brush doesn't really require a very long load time when you're using a crope or a cream. A harder soap would require a greater load time. Uh, adding water incrementally obviously means that you have more control if you add too much water, then you may have gone uh, way over the point of no return. Although many would argue, just use more product. So it's, it's a balancing act. It really is a balancing act. Um, the sort of consistency that I try and achieve when I load my soaps is a sort of a smooth, silky, yogurty kind of consistency. Some soaps do it very easily and with very little effort. Others do not. Uh, and that doesn't mean that the soap is inferior, it just means that each soap, each brush, and all of the conditions that are required to produce a lather are peculiar in each case. They are specific to that particular case. Okay, in this episode's product spotlight, I want to look at two particular products, so it should really be products spotlight, and that is the fat. Mitchell's Wool Fat. One of my favorite soaps and also one of the most controversial soaps because I've heard people time and time again say that it's very difficult to lather, it's too finicky, you know, what's the point? Why should I be spending more than 10 seconds loading a soap or 20 or 30 seconds, uh, you know, loading a soap? What's the point? Is it worth the effort? In my opinion, Mitchell's Wool Fat is a wonderful soap. It produces an exceptional shave and a magnificent post-shave feel. However, there are a few things that you need to be mindful of. When you are going to use Mitchell's wool fat, immerse the entire thing in water. What I generally do is I fill it to the brim and leave it there. Shower, do whatever it is you've got to do, prepare, at least 10 minutes. Remove the water, take your brush and just keep working at it and you'll find in no time at all that a nice uh, load will have been achieved. Now the other product is related in some way to Mitchell's wool fat for me and that is this brush the Kent VS70. Mitchell's wool fat and this Kent brush in my opinion were made for each other. Does this mean that you can't load with a synthetic or a badger? Absolutely not. You can load it with whatever you wish. But I have found this brush and that soap to work beautifully. 
Why? Well, it's a bore brush, a bristle brush, and the ratio of, of I don't know, uh, loft to the amount of bristle that's packed into this particular knot just works. If you want to achieve, in my opinion, what I believe to be one of the best fat shaves, Mitchell's wool fat shaves, that you can possibly ever have, I would give this Kent VS70, the Visage as they call it, a go. It's relatively inexpensive. You'll probably need to hit it with about 15 or 20 shaves, okay? So there is a break-in period. But once this thing is broken in, then these two must never, ever, ever be without each other. Again, I stress, you can lather this soap with any brush. But for some inexplicable reason, mysterious reason, metaphysical reason, I don't know, call it what you like, these two just work. This episode's shave of the day goes to Mr. Dirk Rulkotter. Now, Dirk's pictures, if you know them, and we all do and love them, could feature in any episode of Post Shave's Shave of the Day. In this particular picture, we see lots of blue. Beautiful blue, swathes of blue. Dirk's photographs always look like he's just put his gear down and left the room. Beautifully composed, always natural, excellent depth of field, well thought out, and I'm envious. What can I say? Remember, hashtag SOTD to streamline the search process. You can nominate a friend, just put a hashtag in the comments of their particular pick if you think it's worthy of note. There's so many pictures out there that get put up on the um, social media platforms that we don't have time to look at all of them. So please, if you, if you find one that you think is worthy of note, put a hashtag in it and we'll find it a lot easier. Well, that's it. We'll see you in the next episode of Post Shave. Bye-bye.